Welcome to another episode of Run With and today's episode I am talking to the wonderful Charlotte Perdue. Charlotte is a British endurance runner and she recently ran the Boston Marathon finishing in ninth place and ran London Marathon in 2021 setting a PB of 2.23 placing her as the third fastest British female runner. Charlotte is heading towards the World Champs in Oregon in July, so I caught up with her before she headed over to Flagstaff to complete the rest of her training. Discussed so many things which I think you will find really fascinating. She's a wonderful person and I really hope that you enjoy this chat with Charlotte. Hello Charlotte and thank you very much for meeting me today. We're here in your stomping ground, Windsor. Yeah. Um, you've done your run this morning and we're going to chat now all things running, marathon training, world champs, everything. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. So how are you today? Yeah, good thanks. Did uh, 14 miles just easy this morning. Um, got a big workout tomorrow, so yeah, done for the day now. Right, so we're going to start right at the beginning um, and we'll just briefly dip into your start with running how you got into running, why you started running, because you were a bit of a cross-country queen. <laughs> but how did that all start? Yeah, so I started at school. Um, my friends signed me up for like a the school cross-country um, and I decided to do it for fun. And I think I came sixth out of my year group and top six went to um, represent the school at the local competition. So I went to that competition and when I was there, uh, the local running coach, um, Mick Woods, came over to me and he said, do I run for a club? And I said, no. And he said, I, I watched the way that you started at the back and you came through the field and I think that you look like a good, you could be a good runner. Um, so he kind of said, come to my training. Uh, we meet at this time. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went home and another girl in my class, she actually went to the running club. And she had kind of encouraged me to go with her one time. So I went to her house after school and then we went. And yeah, I just really liked it. Um, so I think I started like twice a week and then three times a week. And then I started doing races. And then once I did the races, I think I caught the bug. I saw that the more training you did, the better you did in the races. And then it was always like a social thing, going up to the um, races with the team on the bus and stuff. It was like just fun. Um, and I wasn't like winning the races at all, I was coming like way down in the field, but it was more just the enjoyment of the whole thing really. Um, and then yeah, just took it from there really. <laughs> and then got very good at it, very good with the cross country. Yeah, I did like cross country. Um, I didn't really like track at all, I, I did do the 800 um, and I thought the 800 was going to be my event. I used to tell people I was going to be an 800 meter runner. <laughs> um, but then I was always better at cross country and like the longer the distance, the better I was. Okay, so yeah. I always just naturally was better at it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know, cross country was where, I think it's because cross country was always longer yeah. than the track. Like I think I could only run 800 under 15 or 1500, whereas cross country was always like 6K. So I was obviously better at the 6K. Um, so that's I think why I was better at this country. <laughs> I love that. Do you think as well that obviously you, you mentioned there quite a few times fun but that that was a big factor for you for sticking at running at that age and persevering through and trying to get better and improve but the fun aspect of it especially as a youngster is so important. Yeah for sure like I never felt pressured to do it or um, yeah no one was telling me like you must go training or anything. Yeah. Um, it was more yeah, just fun and I was the one driving it. I was always the one saying to my mum and dad like can I do this race? Can I do that race? And they were like, Oh okay and they don't run at all. No one in my family runs, so it was new to them as well. Yeah. Um so yeah, we're all like learning about running at the same time. So yeah, honestly it was just fun. <laughs> I love that. I lo and I love that it was so new for your parents as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, because you, you hear a lot of um, people, especially elites now, that it's kind of ingrained in them from their parents and that they've got a history of running in the family so that's really cool I love that and then so you do all the cross country and how does it progress then from your love of running as a junior to then hitting focusing on the marathon and the half marathon what what was the transition like from junior running into your senior years uh yeah so I had like a lot of good role models in my club um there was some good senior athletes that were already representing GB so I think as I got better and I was running with them I saw that they were running for Great Britain and I think like I was keeping up with them and so it was more natural progression because mm -hmm. I had them to like follow basically um, and then yeah like I said when I was like choosing where to go to university and stuff 
Um, I went to St. Mary's in Teddington, which is where a lot of runners go. My coach worked there. Um, so I would train up there anyway. And um, there was like a physiology lab there, which I would go and train at. And um, the physiologist there, we would do like VO2 max tests and stuff. And they would always tell me, you're gonna be a good marathon runner. And I was always like, oh yeah, okay. And like every test I did would come back like, oh, you're suited for the marathon perfectly. You're gonna make a good marathon runner. So I was always told that that was kind of where I should go. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, I would always prefer the longer distances. Yeah. So when I was, um, yeah, as a junior, obviously, I actually represented Great Britain the first time. I think it was 2007 at the World Cross Country. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, uh, I think it was 2010, I ran um, the Commonwealth Games. I was still a junior, but I was in the senior team. So it was kind of like an easy transition for me because I was already, like, as a junior doing um, the 10K uh, as a senior. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of crazy, really, because I was trying to compete against older athletes as a junior. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like a natural progression, I'd say, because I always wanted to do the 10K and I could only do that as a senior. So as soon as I was old enough to run the 10K, I was like, OK, I want to run the 10K. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I made it to the Commonwealth in 2010. Um, so I was 19 running uh, as a senior. So it was kind of like I was already a senior, even though I was still a still junior. Ju still a junior, <laughs> yeah. which is, it is young, isn't it? For people it that is, come up yeah. to kind of through the ranks, like doing the track and stuff, but generally they're not hitting 10K yeah. at that age. And I was doing it like straight away. I do feel now like I've been running for ages. <laughs> but you've had such longevity with running already, like yeah. and, to, and to still, you obviously still got the love for it. So the path that you've chosen and, the, and that you've, gone down even though it feels like you've been doing it for ages because you have um but you've still got i mean you can see with when you're training and sharing it and the way that you're performing that you've still got that that love for it that fun aspect yeah is it no, still there i honestly do still love running um i think like out my whole career i feel like um i'm most proud of the fact that i have been going for so long yeah <laughs> because yeah. it's it is hard to like stay at the top level obviously yeah. um i don't win everything um but it's hard to even be like up there yeah, at the top for so long so i think like looking back that's one of the main things i am most proud of what do you think has been your kind of um secret weapon to <laughs> being able to stay at the top like that i honestly think like loving what i do like training i actually really enjoy training um mm. even if i never raced again now i would still run every day probably okay, <laughs> i just love that. it yeah um i've obviously had a lot of injuries as well so i've had a lot of time off but every time i've always wanted to come back just because i enjoy running i don't enjoy cross training or doing other kinds of training I just running. enjoy running <laughs> yeah so I think even when I do retire I'll still run like all the time as mm. long as my body allows me <laughs> I love that you'll still be at park run yeah, I, <laughs> I might not be like winning or at the top at all then but I'll still be there um so yeah I don't I don't know I think you just have to enjoy it if you don't enjoy training then it's gonna feel like a drag every day like getting yourself out of bed like oh I've got to do a 14 mile run whereas I'm like obviously not skipping out of bed every day <laughs> but I'm kind of like oh yeah I, I enjoy doing it an easy run I enjoy doing a hard session like everything I just enjoy it yeah I think and it speaks volumes that like you just said even if you weren't competing if you weren't racing then you'd still be running and that yeah. just says everything about your love for what you do and that that's obviously such a big factor as to, as to why you keep coming back because I mean you've had some comebacks and I think one of the best comebacks that you've had recently is obviously had um all of this with the Olympic trials, which I know you spoke about a lot of the time, so you don't want to go too mm. kind of into the negatives <clears throat> there. But you had a hell of a comeback from what was then a setback, it must have been a setback mentally. Um, so you, for anybody that isn't aware, which I'm sure most people watching this are, there was the Olympic trials, you were the third fastest woman on paper, you should have been selected to go to the Olympics. Yeah. You weren't. Um, and I think there was a lot of disagreement in the whole community about about that. Um, but you didn't get the chance to appeal and it was kind of, it must have been a bit of a knockback for you at the time. Yeah. But you've come <laughs> back since then and run an amazing London. I mean, your London marathon was 2.23? Yeah, 2.23, 26. <laughs> I mean, like, kind of, it's a, one, it's a way to come back and go, like, <laughs> swish the ponytail. Um, and you also ran amazingly at Boston. How, um, what was it in Boston? 225, wasn't yeah, it? 225, yeah, 225, yeah. I mean, how was Boston, was it? It Amazing. was hilly. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it was definitely, uh, 
yeah the crowd was amazing yeah. uh, the whole weekend was just yeah really cool so yeah definitely loved iconic that. yeah iconic definitely. race i'm glad i've ticked that off that was so good would you yeah. go back again i would yeah um yeah, yeah i did love it it was, yeah. it was a tough course tougher than probably i thought it was going to be in my yeah. head i kind of thought oh you know boston's net downhill so it can't be that slow but yeah. it wasn't the fact that it was slow it's just the hills where they come in the race is like savage <laughs> did you find the impact of the downhill as well as no the i didn't climbs? everyone told me about that so we did train for that so mm. i do a lot of runs where we would run some downhills as well so i found that fine it yep. was more just the fact one that I got left alone at 12 miles so from 12 to 25 miles I didn't see another person okay um, that's, women that's and men tough. are separate so yeah. I was completely alone yeah. and then the hills as well um, yeah from 12 miles onwards it's kind of just like either up or down yeah so you can't get in a rhythm and I, I like to get in a rhythm and run a set pace and for me that was hard <laughs> yeah um, because I was just kind of like grinding it out by myself um, yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> even more amazing. I love that. Um, but obviously, you've come back and you've you've had these amazing races, and you've how how can you use? I mean, how have you used setbacks or what people would perceive as setbacks as things like the Olympic trials, injuries, and things like that to come back stronger? And every time you come back stronger and better, how does that fuel you? Um, I think like having something to focus on. Um, so as soon as the Olympic stuff happened, I had to kind of forget about it mm -hmm. and move on and mm -hmm. focus on the next thing, mm -hmm. uh, which was London Marathon. I think have, if I didn't have London Marathon that October, it would have been even tougher because I don't know, maybe I would have chosen to run New York Marathon or something, but I needed something to focus yeah. on. And then once I had that thing, I was like all in on that. Yeah. So I just completely forgot about the Olympics, went away on a training camp, focused on my own training. Um, and yeah, just got ready for London. So I think that really helped me to have something else. Whereas yeah. I think if you dwell on something for too long, it's like, yeah, it, you kind of just get stuck in that um, yeah, yeah. mindset. So even when I'm injured, I'm always thinking like, okay, I don't know, say for example, I've got to have eight weeks off. I'm like eight weeks off. And then once the eight weeks is up, I'm going to focus on getting back for this. And I always have to have something. Mm. And then even if after eight weeks, I'm not ready to run or I need more time, then I choose something else to focus on. I always have to have something that I'm thinking about every day. Yeah. Um, otherwise I just, yeah, it's harder. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's um, something that no matter what level, um, I mean, we all deal with injuries in running. It's just part and parcel of being a runner, I think. But I guess if you're struggling with injuries or being out at the moment or for any reason, focusing on something, on what you can do and what you can aim towards is a really good step to just trying to get through those periods where it's a bit yeah, yeah <laughs> rubbish not fun, <laughs> <laughs> not fun. Um, and what's um so in periods of injury what's what's your your weapon for getting through them as in cross training or keeping yourself mentally sane um i think every injury has been different um uh, with what you can what i can do and stuff uh i always cross train pretty hard i kind of like to keep the same schedule i find that helps mm -hmm. so say for example um, on a Tuesday I'd have a track workout I would do like a tr the track workout but on the bike or yeah. something like that and then on the Sunday if I did a long run I would do like a long bike or a long something yeah so I kind of keep it the same schedule so every day I wake up and I don't feel like I'm doing anything different just on a different piece of equipment yeah um, so I'm still training exactly the same yeah um, I think that's helped for sure Aqua jogging, how do you feel about that bad boy? Because uh, I don't love it. No. I, yeah, I've had to do that before because I haven't been allowed to do any other cross training. Um, yeah. So then I'll suck it up and do it, but yeah, it's not my favourite. It's really hard. I think mentally it teaches you a lot because you are kind of just yeah. in the pool, kind of like, oh, it's so boring. It's the worst kind of cross training. Yeah. <laughs> like mentally, it's the yeah. hardest because. I don't enjoy swimming either. So yeah. for me, like the swimming pool is like a no-go. Um, no triathlon to you then? No, definitely no. not. I'm terrible. Not terrible at swimming, but I'm like, it's not my favorite. Yeah. So I wouldn't enjoy it every day. I would not wake up like buzzing to go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas cycling yeah. and um, yeah, the cross trainer, I don't mind too yeah. much. I find them, yeah, fine. I can get on with that. Um, I don't like cycling outside though. I like to be indoors on my walk bike. <laughs> it seems very risky outside. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm a bit too accident prone. I think I would actually end up more injured if I went outside than actually what the injury was. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I do see a lot. Well, I see a lot of cyclists, cyclists and, and runners that are cycling and they have accidents. And that's always going through my head. If I'm cycling <laughs> yeah. outside, I'm thinking, oh, if I come off, then I could be out of running. Yeah, no, I'd rather just like 
put the Kardashians on and go on <laughs> yeah. my walk bike. <laughs> Netflix just, and bike. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. Like, then I don't mind it. I can stay on there for like three hours because I'm just watching and I'm like grinding out. That's like, fine. But yeah, if I'm outside, no. <laughs> no okay, sorry. so you've let's slip there. So Kardashians, yeah. their favourite, are they? Guilty yeah. pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Like every Thursday now, a new episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that. I love that. So, I love that. Yeah, that is a guilty pleasure of mine. When I went to Australia like two years ago, I was there by myself. Like my partner couldn't come and I decided to watch the Kardashians right from the first ever season wow. so, and there was 20 seasons and wow. I actually I was in Australia for three months and I finished like all 20 seasons when I got home my dad was like to me you're going to be like brain dead now <laughs> but I like it it's yeah. something to switch off like not to do the running like easy yeah it's, it's the easy viewing isn't yeah. it yeah I think we all have our guilty <laughs> pleasures when it comes to just something that we can switch off but watch exactly. as well yeah. Oh, yeah mine's Snowpiercer I don't know if you've ever watched no, that. It's, watched it's, that it's very niche I think <laughs> it's a train that's just going around in circles but I like the drama <laughs> that happens on there okay so talking of Australia you obviously spend a lot of time over there um, so I want to talk about your training yep. okay so we want to talk about how it differs to training in the UK if it does <laughs> differ to training in the UK um, but first of all let's talk about um, your training here and overall yeah what does a typical marathon training week look like obviously you're not going to be marathon training all the, the, the way through the year yep. but for a marathon training block what's a typical kind of week for you um, a typical week okay so Monday I'll do two easy runs um, I do generally go now a lot more on feel than I used to um, I used to do exactly what my coach set me every single day but now I've kind of obviously learned over the years how I'm gonna be feeling so if I wake up on a Monday and I'm more tired I might do 50 minutes if I'm fine I might do 10 miles in the morning um, so yeah anywhere from like 50 minutes to 10 miles in the morning and then in the afternoon depending on how tired I am I'll either cross train so I'm a cross trainer or I do a 30 minute easy run um, and then yeah that's it for Monday Tuesday I do a session um, so usually like 8 or 10k volume um, then a warm up and cool down and then in the afternoon I'll cross train um, I used to do second run but I don't do that anymore um, then Wednesday I usually do same like 10 miles or 50 minutes depending how I feel and then yeah cross training in the afternoon um, and then Thursday I'll do like a longer run so like today 14 miles um, and then nothing in the afternoon. Uh, Friday's like the big session of the week, like the marathon session. So yeah, it can be like anything really, like marathon reps, um, like 3K um, efforts, 2K efforts, 4K, like kind of a mix. But usually, yeah, that's the longest session of the week. Um, and then in the afternoon, cross training. Um, Saturday is like a real easy day. So basically whatever I want. So I could do like two 30 minute runs or like one 50 minute run or just whatever really. He, my coach doesn't really mind. <laughs> and then Sunday's like a long run. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, probably two hours um, starting off. And then as I get closer to the marathon, move up to like two and a half hours. Um, I don't generally run over two and a half hours. I don't think I have ever, maybe once. <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, up to two and a half hours, minimum two hours. And then, yeah, usually it's kind of at a steady pace. Um, I don't ever, ever really do like a flat out two hour run or anything yeah. like that. Just, yeah, to feel really. Okay. Um, and then when I was training for Boston, I obviously did a lot of hilly runs. So that was a lot harder. But mm. when I was training for London, I tend to just stay on the flat, flat. or so yeah, just whatever pace I want and then yeah, nothing in the afternoon. <laughs> um, so you said about the cross training now that you're doing the cross training instead of some of the doubles. Yeah. Uh, would you say now that your running mileage has decreased for your marathon training cycles? Are you running slightly mm. less miles but doing a bit more cross training or still probably the same amount of miles? Yeah, I'd say similar but probably less, definitely less miles I'd say. Yeah. Um, because yeah, sometimes, yeah, I would usually do second runs um before i'm talking like 2016 to maybe 2019 i pretty much did second run every day except sunday yeah um but then when i picked up a few injuries the in 2019 2020 um me and my coach decided that that was how we were going to progress and, yeah um because i've done so many marathons now as well i don't really feel like i need to run so many miles all the time because i've got like eight marathons in my legs now because you've had big big <laughs> yeah big I've done weeks. all the work yeah. before yeah. so now although I'm still running like 100 miles a week so yeah, it's, it's, like, it's not a little tiny bit yeah, yeah like yeah. dropping those 20 miles that I was doing so 120 and doing it on the cross trainer or the bike is has been a lot better for me um, just I know now that 
I'm probably not going to get injured doing that. Um, whereas when I do 120, I'm like always on the edge of maybe getting another injury. Yeah. So it's more risky. So I'd rather have like consistent weeks, not having a risk of getting injured. Yeah. Um, rather than doing those extra 20 miles and risking maybe getting an injury. So yeah. that's the main reason, the injury prevention. Um, yeah. No other reason really. Just. But I guess it's good that you found kind of your levels now, and you know yeah. that if you're going to go up to that, you're you're risking it, and it's it's the risk reward thing. Isn't yeah, it? it is, and like obviously I ran my PB in London off doing um, the less mileage and the more cross training, so I know it works now. So um, I mean, we say less mileage, but 100 miles a <laughs> yeah. week is still That's huge. What I mean. It's still like <laughs> yeah. a lot of mileage, and yeah. a lot of runners don't even run that, obviously, even for the marathon. So I feel like I'm still doing a lot. Um, but yeah, from where I was doing before, it's not always, yeah, more is not always better. Um, and obviously I still am training, doing the cross training anyway, so. Yeah. But like I said, I think a key has been listening to my body now a lot more. Whereas yeah. before I would always stick to the plan. So like on a Monday, if I do wake up and I'm sore from the long run, I'll just maybe switch even the runs around. So I do cross trainer in the morning and a second run in the afternoon or yeah, just do two cross trainers even I've done before. So I really do like wake up and see how I feel. Whereas before when I was younger, I would definitely, if I was set maybe 10 miles in the morning, I would always do the 10 miles. And I think if, if it's I, on plan, it's, yeah, it's getting done. Yeah, I had to do yeah. it. And yeah. um, I have definitely really learned a lot about you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, because every run is different. And even my coach, he's obviously in Australia when he sets me my training he doesn't know how I feel um, yeah. so yeah I have to obviously wake up and see how I'm gonna be going and yeah he trusts a lot that I know what kind of what I'm doing now do you think though that's something that you kind of pick up on and you improve as you mature as a runner yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. I think uh, obviously as a as a youngster you always think yeah more is better and um, you have to do exactly like what's on the plan well I did anyway yeah but I think yeah like I said I've learned the hard way that that's not the case and everyone is different as well so what your training partner might be able to do is not the same as what you can do yeah so I think yeah definitely I've learned more individual um, approach <laughs> strength training any strength training in no. there no <laughs> <laughs> yeah my physio yeah, I was always moaning at me like I need to do more strength training. But when I was injured, I was doing a lot of like rehab exercises for the injuries and stuff. And I do do that, um, especially when I've got like a niggle or something needs to be strengthened. But no, at the moment, not so much. <laughs> no, but I think that's something that a lot of people can kind of relate to is that yeah. we as runners are pretty, you know, if we're injured or if we're struggling, something like we've got to strength train. And then as soon as you're you're running and you do it, it kind of goes on the back burner. And I think that's quite. Yeah. a common thing among runners I know I've done it I know other people have done it um, but yeah if you don't need to <laughs> yeah the thing is as well like I said it's an enjoyment thing like yeah. I enjoy running I do not enjoy uh, cr um, not cross training I do enjoy cross training but I don't enjoy strength training at not, all. not enjoying like, the bar and no, getting strong like, and all the squats honestly, I, I hate that yeah. so I'm not going to be like pumped up to do it so if I can skip doing that I will yeah. but obviously yeah I know it is important to do some kind of strength training and I do do like a lot of little exercises at home like core stuff and um, yeah like glute stuff and just stuff I can do at home but actually going to the gym and yeah squatting with a heavy bar is not for me it's not for you <laughs> not it's not for you me. I know some people enjoy it yeah. and then it's quite I, think, I guess it's good if you enjoy that too it's always <laughs> going to be beneficial but if you're not enjoying it no no <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. Absolutely fair enough. But if you're listening, do your strength training. <laughs> yeah, do your strength training. <laughs> as a coach, and then we'll talk about your coaching in a bit. But as you, as a coach, is it something that you recommend to your runners to do strength, strength training. training? Yeah, um, I do. It depends, really. Like I said, on the runner, on the runner, and yeah, yeah the if athlete. they've had a few injuries and they need to strengthen their calves, maybe then it is really important to do that. If you're picking up niggles all the time, then it's obviously something you need to address. And mm. if I did my physio didn't tell me I need to strengthen my calves and do this exercise every day I would do it yeah um, but yeah generally I like going to the gym and doing a strength session is not something I enjoy but I can tell <laughs> I can't watch Kardashians no. doing no, that no, no. <laughs> okay so um, you spend a lot of time in Australia doing training because uh, your coach is obviously in Australia as well yeah how does it differ from your training in the UK um, so the actual training is obviously pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK I do a lot of training alone. Um, I have my partner to run with um, so we do all our easy runs together but then on workout days um, unless I'm training for like a really key race 
I'll be alone. He'll sometimes cycle with me if I can persuade him. But he has his own training to do as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, usually when I'm in the UK, I'm training alone. Um, my Australian group come over to the UK once a year. Um, usually in about May time and then so they're here now um, so I'll meet them for training now which is really cool yeah and then my coach is also here and then he'll stay until probably like September October time and then go back to Australia yeah um, and then I usually head over there like December or January and stay till about March it's a good time um, to go over <laughs> so good <laughs> the weather over there is like that's their middle of summer so it's like perfect weather and then I have the group to train with and my coach is there so it makes sense really to go over there then um, whereas if I'm in the UK, I'm completely alone training in the winter and it's yeah. like a lot harder. I obviously could do it and I have done it loads of times, but yeah, it makes a difference to go over there. So yeah, that's why I tend to go over there. Do you feel it helps you uh, training as a group push a little bit more, kind of get, just get a little bit extra out of yourself when you're yeah, in training? It definitely does. And also, yeah, like the change of scenery and having my coach there able to like watch me, whereas when... Um, he's in Australia and I'm here it's a lot harder because he can't see what I'm doing every day mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's a, a lot better for me yeah. going over there <laughs> you've got that in-person feedback yeah yeah definitely okay brilliant um, so you are shortly to be heading out to America yep. to Flagstaff ready for the yep. world champs yeah <laughs> how excited are you for that one yeah I'm excited it'll be good um, yeah the world champs will be it's been a quick turnaround after Boston but I've already done a lot of marathon training already this year. I feel already quite fit for the marathon. Yeah. So I've just got to yeah get my legs back and yeah be ready. Fine to tune. Go. Yeah, fine tune. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and it's in Oregon in July, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we going to see PB? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you never know actually with like championship races because they could be fast or yeah. Uh, at Boston, I didn't look at my watch at all, and I ended up running 2:25, which I was mm. surprised about because mm. I honestly had no clue. Mm. Um, obviously, with the course, I wasn't going to go for a time. Um, so when I actually ended up with a decent time, I was like, wow. So yeah, I think the same approach at World Champs, just try and finish as high up as I can. I won't be looking at. My so you're not going to be looking at the watch? No, not at all. So I'll just be going for a position. When we so. see you racing, we know that you're <laughs> just in the zone and going with whatever feels right. Pretty much, yeah. That's yeah. what I did at Boston. Although I did wear my watch because. I always just like to have it on. It feels weird without, but um, yeah. yeah, I won't be like looking at splits or anything. I'll just be running. So when you've got your watch on and you're not looking at your splits, what yeah. what have you just got it on the clock face or? Yeah, just yeah. on the clock face. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it does help towards the end of the race, especially like at Boston when I was alone, when it, um, the K's were like flashing up to know, yeah, yeah, where I was and stuff. But I wasn't actually looking at the exact pace. Like, oh, I need to run a five twenty mile this mile or something I was just kind of just there for I don't know back up <laughs> do you think that helps you do you think it does help good, me yeah I don't like to run without a watch I know a lot of runners do like to race without a watch but I like to have it there just as a backup <laughs> I don't know why I train with it every day so for, to not have it in a race would feel weird for me like I would rather have it than not have it um, I can happily not look at it but if I want to look at it it's there <laughs> kind of thing yeah so um because I know kind of like even like myself like, so when I'm doing an easy run or I have done races without the thing but again have to have the watch <laughs> you need to have the stats after yeah but like for an easy run and stuff I do you think it's a quite a good tip for people to kind of not look at their watch to just have it on a watch face and just yeah. go off feel definitely yeah I do do that um pretty much all my easy runs I never go out and try to run a pace I just run but I obviously like to have the watch so after I can look or oh just, we all never start yeah exactly. <laughs> just so I can know like how far I ran like yeah. the distance or whatever um but yeah I don't look at it as if like I have to run this pace on for an easy run and we do tell our runners that we coach to do the same thing I think it is really important because mm. um, otherwise yeah once if you run too fast on your easy day and then the next day you've got a hard workout where you actually have to run a set pace and you can't do it because you're tired like mm. it would have been better to run easier on the easy day and hit the workout better yeah. so yeah <laughs> yeah if it's working for you it'll work <laughs> for everybody else um okay so let's talk about a little bit about marathons uh because you are you know so good at them um what tips have what what do you do because it, it must get tough in a marathon even you know I think people can sometimes think, oh, you know, elite runners, they don't find it hard like normal <laughs> runners, which obviously you do. So when you're finding it tough in a race and it's coming to crunch time, what tips and tricks do you use to get through 
whatever it is you've got to get through whether it's get to the end or you know get to halfway when it when it's really getting tough what do you use yeah so we have like elite drink stations every 5k and that does help me a lot um because when it's getting hard i'm thinking like let's just get to the next drink stop and then get a drink yeah so obviously in the mass race you don't have that but you could still use the same kind of thinking like i'll get to the next 5k and then get a drink off the course or something um so yeah i use that a lot um especially in boston when like I was by myself, I was kind of thinking, okay, let's get to the next drink station and then, yeah, focus on that. So that's obviously every 5K, so it does go quite quickly when you're doing, doing yeah. that. Yeah, break but, it down. Yeah, breaking it down is good. And also, if you've seen the course before, like knowing key markers, like where they are, or if you've got someone on the course that's going to be at mile 18, you're like, oh, let's get to that person. Just trying to mm. think about the next thing ahead <laughs> um, yeah. and just try to keep going, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is that, so are they going to be some of the key things getting you through your run at World Champs? You're going to be. Yeah, I mean, the World Champs, like I said, could be a slow race. I, I honestly have no idea how it will go, but yeah, I'll always um, be focusing on yeah trying to get to the next <laughs> next point. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And what's after? Is there an autumn marathon on the cars or not really after? Uh, World yep, Champs? there, there is. is. Yeah, uh, okay. I am planning to run London. Yeah. Um, this year so like, it works out quite well that it's in October <laughs> again this year yeah, yeah. Uh, like I really want to do it obviously yeah. if like I don't know what will happen at the world champs but obviously the, my next focus is the world champs um, but yeah I always want to run London Marathon every year <laughs> so I feel I like London's your thing <laughs> yeah. I can never turn it down so I'm like yeah. well I really want to run it this year yeah. um, but obviously next same as world champs and then we'll see after that but yeah I do want to run it this year um, obviously it'll be three marathons in a year which is a lot yeah. but like I said before it's not like I'm starting from scratch every time and doing like a massive build up every single marathon now I'm building on the last one so Boston was building on London and then yeah World Champs is building on Boston so it's not like I'm starting from scratch yeah. so I kind of have to just recover and then like you said fine tune for the next one yeah. Um, so yeah yeah you've got this massive base just yeah, that to you build can work upon. with yeah. yeah pretty much so although it is a lot of races it's like I run 100 miles every week and a marathon's only 26 miles so mm. it, it's fun to do I think yeah <laughs> I feel like I um, yeah coping well so far <laughs> well it's working for you because it, you're, you're just knocking off <laughs> seconds minutes off your pbs and it, you're pbing left right and center <laughs> and that's what I, I absolutely love about you is that you you know you do have setbacks and you do have things that knock you for a little bit but you come back stronger every time and it's <laughs> what's that phrase uh, for every setback to come back stronger or something oh, yeah, yeah. like something <laughs> like that that's you Thanks. um <laughs> And what about longer term? So let's think about Olympics. Are you going to go for the Olympics, <laughs> Olympic standard? For yeah, the next, I, I next feel round? like I'm cursed with the Olympics. So now I don't really like to think about it. Okay. I'm like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I feel like my career now, I'm not like trying to be an Olympian. Like that's just, that could be something, but it could also not be. And I'd happily retire not being an Olympian. Like what would be, would I would be? say it doesn't bother me. Obviously it bothers me, but it's like, it's not the be all and end all now i'm like i've got other things to focus on as well um yeah, like it. i really want to run all the marathon majors yeah. um so obviously i've only done two now yeah um and i've still got chicago yeah, four to, yeah. tokyo Bo uh berlin berlin and have you not you've not run berlin i no. started it and i got food po i had food poisoning the night before um yeah. so which was yeah not ideal i was like throwing up all night and i decided to still race so i dropped out at like 10k which it wasn't yeah. very good like 10k into a marathon i shouldn't really have started but i did so i'm not counting that as like racing no berlin. no no yeah no but, but so berlin I, take two yeah i need to do another uh, berlin um chicago uh tokyo and uh what's the other one is it new york oh yeah new, new york. york yeah new so york would be great i really yeah. wanted to run new york as this year but then obviously london i'm like oh <laughs> but yeah i would love to do new york um yeah i did the half there this year which was cool yeah it's actually really hilly yeah uh i wasn't expecting it to be that hilly but i think it was good prep for boston so yeah, yeah new york's definitely on the all of them are on the bucket list so yeah i really want to run all the majors Look, they're all the, the it's, it's a few of them are quite close together yeah. in the autumn aren't they it's so it's kind and of like also like london marathon is usually a trial race for the british athletes so like when it moves back to april it's usually like the trials for the next thing so like it'll be probably the olympic trial uh, the world champs trial it's like always a trial so 
and obviously it's London Marathon, so mm -hmm. it's hard to turn down that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, when it moves back to April, I think it'll be better because then the only clash is like Boston. Yeah, and I've done Boston now. That's why I really wanted to run Boston this year because I saw it as like a perfect opportunity to run. Yeah, um, so if London gets moved back to April, yeah, which I, can, I guess it will. Yeah, yeah, it is moving back to April. So yeah, um, yeah hopefully maybe next year I run some uh, maybe Berlin, Chicago or New York. Well, maybe, all <laughs> maybe all of them. Maybe all of them. Maybe try. <laughs> maybe it's just your year to run one for fun. We know, like you know, yeah. race one, <laughs> run one for fun, and whatever on the on the next My one. My probably won't let me, but yeah, maybe next year I do want another one. Who was then... it this year that did did all of them? Is it Shalane? Oh, Shalane, yeah. <laughs> she did all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But she was incredible. I mean, yeah. she did them all like super fast. So fast. Yeah. And also, she did. Um, yeah, two of them were like back to back. Yeah. Chicago and Boston were like the, the next day. The day yeah. I, can't, I don't even know how she did that because after running Boston, obviously, I saw like how hard the course was and having, I wouldn't run a marathon the day before or after. So like, yeah, geez, I don't know how she did that. <laughs> it is incredible. It's incredible. But I guess, you know, marathon runners, endurance runners, <laughs> we're all made of grit in some <laughs> yeah. way. And it's just, I guess True. you're just really putting out all the grit to do that one. <laughs> Um, okay, let's talk about your coaching because you coach others, you help others, you've got Purdue Performance yeah. and it's you and your partner, is that right? Yeah, me yeah. and my partner Adam, yeah. We set it up in 2018 um, because, yeah, we just wanted like something else really. Like obviously being an athlete is great, but it's nice to have something else to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do really enjoy it. Um, we both do it together. We have other coaches now as well. Um, to help us out so yeah it's going well it's growing and you've got it's the team going. I always <laughs> see kind of on on social media and stuff you know kind of your t members of your team kind of they, they pop up here and there <laughs> and it's, it always seems like a really good community that yeah. you're, you're building it is cool like even at Boston Adam came out to watch me and we had a lot of runners that were running and it was just yeah it was cool because they're also racing in the same race that I'm doing so it's like you said like when I'm thinking that it's hard they're also racing thinking that it's hard and it's, you can relate to them so much as well um, mm. like when I wake up in the morning and I've got yeah like a hard workout I'll wake up look at my phone and see on training peaks that some of our runners have already run and they obviously have a full-time job as well so that's like really inspiring to me that they get out and they're doing like a two-hour run before work working yeah. all day looking after their kids and then doing it again the next day whereas I'm like a full-time athlete obviously coaching as well but it's not the same and I think like they inspire me as much as maybe I inspire them I don't know but they do inspire me so much like when I see that I'm like whoa that's that's incredible I love that <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool actually I do find that like another aspect it just puts things into perspective yeah like I'm like well it, when it's raining outside like I run because one it's my job obviously I enjoy it but it is actually my job mm. whereas they don't have to go out running but they still do and mm. I'm like well that's that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah. so yeah I do like that side of it as well yeah, um, I love that yeah <laughs> I love that I think I can speak on behalf of parents though it is a bit of escapism too <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> it's kind of like okay. well, you know you can spend another Time hour arguing over something or you can just go outside and run <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go and run it's the easier option um, but no that's really cool that you get so much from your athletes as well that they give back to you and you're giving to them and creating this community um, what I will do is put all of Charlotte's coaching details below in the links um, so if anybody's interested they can head on over and have you got spaces at the moment for athletes yeah, yeah. we do yeah we've just actually taken on another coach which is really cool so yeah, yeah um, we are growing all the time but yeah it's cool yeah <laughs> brilliant and I'm guessing it's all kind of levels that you've got yeah definitely yeah, yeah we coach like, different all distances levels. yeah standards. definitely anyone yeah. who wants to run we'll we'll coach you if so. you like running you can <laughs> yeah. join <laughs> if you don't run but you want to run <laughs> yes absolutely i mean would you have any tips for somebody that's looking to get into running yeah i would say oh it's hard i i always think it's good to have a goal um even if it's just doing a park run completing a park run like anything really it's good to have something to aim towards mm -hmm. um i i find that helps me definitely to just have something to focus yeah, on even if maybe if you don't want to race but it's just like a personal goal like i want to complete one lap of the lake from my house um just something to work towards yeah. definitely helps otherwise i find like it's hard to get motivated every day to to run um, I know a lot of people may, might start running after having a child or something, lose weight, like anything. Just it's good to have a goal to work towards. Yeah, no, I love that, and I think it's important to have goals. That's obviously personal to you, but not everybody is 
kind of concerned about like time goals yeah, exactly. or Everything's you know this this these typical goals yeah yeah and a lot i think a lot of people do think that when they're running like they have to have these big goals like i want to run berlin marathon or something but you don't have you don't have to have that massive goal you can have like your own personal like challenge and that's still just as important as yeah. something something else so yeah yeah no i love that i love that i think from like a personal uh, standpoint like my my ultimate goal is to boss it qualify which i think is quite a popular yeah goal for a lot of runners it's like the mecca of running you know we all want to get to boston so we got that boston qualifying um but i've found because it's such a big goal that you need the little goals yeah. on the way to these these big things um but like what you were saying about keeping things fun and and how you enjoy running and it's fun for you and the training is the important aspect for you i think it's it's important to find something like that when you're heading towards like time goals or yeah. or whatever it is that keeps you connected to why you're running why you're doing it keeps you interested and keeps yeah. you having fun yeah for sure and i think uh, a lot of people as well i think if you run with people um, and other run with people that have the same kind of goal that definitely helps as well mm. um like when i first started running and i was at the club and doing the races with my friends like that made it not even seem like I was doing any hard work yeah. at all. I was just going for fun. It was like an enjoyment thing. Yeah. Um, and then obviously when I became a professional athlete, it came a bit more serious. But um, obviously I still run with friends now. I still run my partner every day. Um, so I think having someone to meet up with, that does help too. Yeah. Um, so if you do struggle like with motivation, I think it is, yeah, it can help you to run with people or um, join a group or something like that. Even if you don't know them, right? If you go yeah. to a park run on a Saturday, like yeah. turning up at a park run and you don't know anybody, um, but you are kind of all connected because you're there to exactly. do park run and enjoy it, like yeah. just finding a community. And I think the park run's really cool as well because it's all pretty much all around the world. Like when I go to Australia, I always make a point of doing one park run because yeah, it's pretty cool to be in Australia doing the park run. Have you got some records over in Australia? I did actually get the record this year. Yeah. Um, I did it on New Year's Day. Amazing. Um, I arrived on like the, the 26th of December and I said to my coach, cause he was, I only had an easy week that week. So obviously just traveled and um, I said to him, can I run the park run on Saturday? And he was like, yeah, if you want. <laughs> and it was a really hot day actually in Melbourne and the park run starts earlier there because of the heat. So it starts at eight. Um, so yeah, I rocked up to the park run and I got the record. Um, so that was cool. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. So just, got just, it just casually. You know. <laughs> just for the uh, yeah that that I I think it's um, that park run, not the whole Australian like record or anything, but yeah, just for that one. Park yeah, run, but still, <laughs> but still take it, take yeah, it, take it. Yeah, for a training run. <laughs> Ever fancy just deviating from marathon training and going for the 5k record here? Oh no, I mean I did a 10k at the weekend um, yeah. just for training. Like my coach wanted me to do it as like a workout. Um, yeah, because he thought, you know, I'd push myself harder if I was in a race environment. And I did that and I was like, well, 10K is so short. I got, <laughs> I got like 7K in and I only then started to feel like warmed up. And yeah. I was like, I've only got like a few K left to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anything less than a half marathon now, I really find fast <laughs> and I, hard. I, I love that though, because you said like, even like as a, as a teenager, like you like the longer stuff yeah. and you've just always liked the longer stuff. That's you, that's, that's your thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, 5K is so short now mm. i think maybe once i stop doing marathons i'll go back to shorter distances but yeah for now like longer the better for me <laughs> what about longer longer ultras yeah i've thought about that actually i think maybe when i retire i'd like to have a go at doing one, <laughs> I, one? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know if i'd enjoy it or not i think i would but i i think i'd rather run like marathons for fun yeah like i really want to do disney disneyland yeah marathon and like just yeah. fun marathons and the wine marathons yeah all of yeah. them like maybe london marathon like dressed up or something and like jogging around like getting the jelly babies off the court and like actually embracing that. the whole experience <laughs> do you feel like you miss a little bit of that being at the elite level now yeah. and just kind of like you're so focused i do feel like that because i mean it would be fun to run with the masses and to embrace the whole experience obviously being an elite is a different experience yeah um and so yeah i would
would like to do the other other experience as well and experience the other side. <laughs> you you've got it the best way because as most of us <laughs> mere mortals are going to experience the elites and having our own drinks. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'll be like, where are my drinks? <laughs> Every time, okay. You'll have to get somebody to like to put a little marker on a cup for you. Yeah, that's true. And I also thought like I'd be out there for so much longer, so it'll be harder, I reckon. Because obviously, when I run the marathon, I'm out there for like two hours. 23 or whatever but when I'm retired and I'm embracing it I might be out there for like four hours which I've never run for four hours before. Wow <laughs> I mean you know Matt he's you know he's not elite he's sub elite whatever but he um his usual marathon time of 229 and then he ran a marathon with me uh which I ran in 445 and he couldn't get over it he was like <laughs> what is going on and he couldn't believe it it was people like stopping at the side there was drinks and cups everywhere he was like what is this <laughs> yeah i mean I've, I've literally never run longer than like probably two hours 45. i think that marathon hurt him more than <laughs> any other marathon he's run so yeah I you'll have to being on your feet for that long would yeah. be really hard so yeah. yeah i'd have to take like actual snacks and stuff yes yeah, snacks <laughs> just just take it or take a picnic because yeah. it's, it's a long time out yeah but i think hard. you know it, it kind of like goes to show like who, whatever speed you're doing a marathon at they're hard right because yeah, you guys have got that hard burn at the front but then you've got the people who are more middle of the pack back of the pack and it hurts because you are out there for such a long time and you're on your feet for you know hours on end and that's hard as well so it's just hard for everybody but worth <laughs> definitely it definitely is hard yeah i think i do often think that when i'm running like the last 100 meters of a marathon is is very hard for me as well and I think a lot of people do think that because you're an elite runner, it's not hard for mm -hmm. you. But every day when I run, it is hard. Yeah. Like I never go for an easy run even and think like, oh, this is so easy. Obviously, if I ran so slow, it would be easy. But the pace that we run, it's all relative. Yeah. So like when I'm running every day, <laughs> I don't find it easy every day. No. Um, but I think there is a perception that elite runners find it easy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But we don't find it easy. Because I think you guys can make it look so easy because it looks so effortless. <laughs> Definitely I mean, isn't. <laughs> if you look below the body, when you start looking at the faces, you know, when you're like, you're, you can tell, yeah. you know, you're in that pain cave, uh, the yeah. same as everybody else, like, you know. Yeah, it definitely is. I think the difference is that obviously we do it as a job, so we're doing it more often, more frequent, so I don't know, but it's definitely not easy. <laughs> no, I can't imagine. I, I think like, anybody trying to imagine like running at your speeds and your <laughs> intensity is, uh, whew, it's hard work. Okay, there's one more thing that I just kind of wanted to go through because you just touched upon it that it hurts for you guys. Do you think that, there's a couple of things actually, okay. So let's talk about talent and hard work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of people think that elite athletes are just talented, um, but I believe and I think most people know that it takes an extraordinary amount of hard work to be at the level that you are yeah um so let's talk about the normal guy do you think that people that haven't i think you guys have got talent you've got the hard work but it is a, a huge level of hard work do you think the normal guy can put in a massive amount of hard work and get to a certain level yeah i think everyone obviously has like a ceiling of how good they can get otherwise everyone would be like elliot yeah. kipchoge breaking a world record yeah or like paula radcliffe um, so I think everyone's got their own ceiling, but obviously you don't know where that is unless you work really hard. Yeah. So I think, yeah, everyone's got to, you've got to work at your own, however hard you want, obviously motivated, like if you want to do it. Um, but I do think, yeah, as a kid, you see a lot of talented people. Um, like when I was growing up, there was so many people that were better than me, but so many of them either dropped out of the sport, didn't enjoy it, or just, just don't run anymore. Um, but I obviously worked really hard and got to where I am now, but I don't think I was the most talented at all. Um, and I could see that from, yeah, I only came sixth in my year group, for yeah. example, um, at my first race, whereas there was five other girls that were better than me and I don't think any of them run now. Mm. So, yeah, I think uh, a lot of things play into it, like, like I said, enjoyment or, yeah, uh, lifestyle factors. Um, some people might just want to get a job or <laughs> do something else um, and not focus on it as much. Um, but yeah, I think working really hard is definitely yeah the main thing, not talent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that kind of leads on to the mindset. Do you think that 
do you think you are good at kind of staying in that place where it's hurting and you've got to push forward and kind of go to that place where you know you're you're deep in there do you think you also have to have some people have a better mindset when it comes to that some people are able to put themselves in that kind of pain cave for longer for 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 more do you think that kind of goes hand in hand with it the the mental side of it yeah i do i think sometimes that's um not been my friend like pushing too hard in the past and getting injured um because if you're injured all the time and you can't run then you're not going to be a good runner yeah and i think consistency in running is really key like getting consistent weeks of running maybe like 60 miles is better than doing like two weeks at 100 miles and then being injured for six months yeah so i think like the mindset thing you can often think harder is better and that can get you obviously to good places but often it can also get you injured yeah so it is a balance keeping it in check yeah definitely keeping it in check because if I thought to myself okay I'm gonna go all at it hard every single day which I could easily do um Mm -hmm. I would probably be injured and not make it to world champs right now so it is hard because you have to obviously channel that and uh, use it at certain times like races or like key workouts but at certain times you've got to like dial it back yeah. like today I could have easily run yeah like 10 seconds a mile faster if I wanted to but that tomorrow I'd be tired from my workout so I'm not going to do that so it is a is a balance I think that's where having a coach helps <laughs> as yeah. well because they keep can, in check yeah keep I can never coach myself <laughs> yeah I've been terrible I'd be running like 50 miles a day <laughs> I love that so, yeah no yeah. absolutely because you could just I think a lot as well there's a lot of coaches that kind of say um do as I say not as I do yeah <laughs> that yeah, kind definitely. of that kind of thing because definitely. it's like as a coach you want to do stuff and you're like nah, I wouldn't recommend that you do that yeah yeah I think I always say to my coach like can I do this and he's like no you can't, you can't do that <laughs> um and I always say to him yeah that's why I don't coach myself because I just need someone else to tell me what to do so I can wake up and not think about it or yeah. um say to him like should I do this today and he's like oh I don't think that's a good idea whereas yeah. I think yeah I can be my own worst enemy and think hard every day is better but yeah definitely not <laughs> yeah okay I love that <laughs> anything else that you wanted to add today I can't really think about can't really think of anything except, I, I think uh, they covered filmed, a lot of they filmed Harry Potter here <laughs> yes we are at the lake where, for any Harry Potter there was uh, there was a scene where is it, which scene is it Charlotte explains um, it's better where well there's a lot of scenes but one of the ones was where um, Harry's like flying over the lake on um the bird thing I can't, remember the b- <laughs> I can't remember what it's called now <laughs> on the prisoner of Azkaban um, yeah we're yeah. a bit cold now yeah. I think it's a little I've bit got, like a bit of brain freeze I love Harry Potter so this is really I know. embarrassing we've got me. two Harry Potter like enthusiasts yeah. like not being able also, to think is it called Buckbeak Buckbeak that's the one yeah I, th- yeah. I think that's what it's called but anyway yeah they filmed a lot of Harry Potter here so I, that's another reason I love running here another guilty pleasure of mine is every training camp I go on I always watch all the Harry Potters <laughs> yeah yeah I love that I love that because Harry Potter is my go-to for yeah. whatever I need because exactly. you know it inside out yeah. as well so you so don't good. like have to you just know it <laughs> which is your favorite one uh, I reckon I actually like uh, the Prince one. Yeah, Half um, Blood Prince. Half Blood, That's half my Blood favorite Prince. one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my daughter's got into it, but I've had to. I've had to be careful. We watched the first few, um, and she hasn't gone any further um, because I don't know if they're a bit too dark for her. Yeah. She's only six. They do get a bit scary. They get, don't bit, they? They get a bit dark, but yeah. I like that. I do yeah, like that. I do like that too, but I do see what you mean. They could be scary, like the bit with the dementors. Like yeah, that, the that dementors. Was, that freaks me out. Like, I can imagine her coming down the stairs, like, mummy, there's a dementor yeah, in my that bedroom. Me out. <laughs> so, yeah, I see what you mean. Six is maybe a bit young, I don't know. Yeah, but she, I mean, she enjoys it. She enjoys it. I mean, how can you not? It's Harry Potter. Yeah. And I'm trying to read the books. I'm trying to do it the proper way and, and like, get her into the books. Was it books first for you? Yeah, it yeah. was books first because I they don't, hadn't made the films yet when no. I started reading the books that makes me feel really old but uh i know i'm just yeah. thinking how old I, I feel i mean actually waiting for the release of the next book as well um <laughs> yeah. a bit older <laughs> yeah no I, I remember that too yeah. so yeah yeah <laughs> oh wow good memories any <laughs> harry potter fans then uh yeah i mean just you can let us know what you love about harry potter in the comments <laughs> below i have absolutely loved loved talking with you today um i love your enthusiasm (laughs) for the sport because it is so refreshing and it's so refreshing to hear somebody who performs at such the top level that you can do um talk about the enjoyment of running the fun for running and that 
actually you love the process um, as much as the outcome and the big goals and all the rest of it and that you just want to be able to do park run when you're <laughs> <laughs> retired yeah. and do Disney marathons and, and I absolutely love that um, I'm wishing you all the luck in the world for Thanks world so champs much. and can't wait to see how you get on at London obviously as well <laughs> um, and everything that the future holds if you've got any questions or you'd like to know anything else then please do leave a comment below I will try and get back to you or maybe Charlotte can get back to you um, but do head over to Charlotte's Instagram page which I will put below in the links I will also put Charlotte's coaching details there she has got spaces but be quick because <laughs> They'll probably fill up fast. But thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. And right. yeah, I'm going to go for a run now around this wonderful <laughs> lake and just imagine Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, but you're done. You're yeah, done, I'm and done you can uh, you, you can go home and drink coffee and put your feet up <laughs> for a bit. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed that conversation with Charlotte. I know I certainly did. I'll be back next week with another fabulous guest. Please do like, share, subscribe, help support the channel and this series. Until next week, have a great week and happy running.